Hey, Key. Hey. Hello, all, buddy. Hello. <laughs> Good deal. Okay, so today we're on Spirit, Soul, and Body, and we're on Lesson 3, The Pivot Point. But before we get started here, let's go and do our discipleship questions from last week. Lesson 2, All Things New. So... The first question, number one, was read 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 18. So if we look at our scriptures here, somebody want to read that for me? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's right. We're all new creators in Christ Jesus, right? Amen. Hallelujah. The finished work of the cross. Jesus already did everything for us. Amen? Amen. Okay. Number two, what has become new? All things, right? Mm -hmm. What is of God? All things. All things. Okay. So those of you guys, uh, what are you looking for? Last, week. Last week's lesson. There you go. I should have probably explained this first, yeah. So we have three things on our lessons here for those of you guys who are handing this out to you. We have the lesson outline. We have the scriptures. The second page is all the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And discipleship questions, that's the homework for later. I'm trying not to call it homework, but it's what, it is what it is, right? <laughs> okay. Number four, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 53. The discorruptible must put on... In corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. immortality. That's right. Okay, read Ephesians 1 14. Somebody want to do that for me? Ephesians 1 14. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Yeah. Okay, could you guys hear that online? No. Barely. Barely. Yeah. Okay. Let me pull it up here. First Corinthians. Oh, I came at the wrong one here. First Corinthians fifteen fifty three. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this no. Am I reading the wrong thing? No. Ephesians. Ephesians one fourteen. Which is the earnest of which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Hi, do you have your phone on you? Can I borrow it? Okay, now this is original King James Version. That's why you want the eSword app or some kind of app that you can immediately look at different apps and pull up. Where am I? Ephesians, okay, Ephesians. Ephesians 1.14. Okay, so what, what I'm doing here, in my app right here, you guys can, I don't know if you guys can see this, kind of blurry there. So I have different translations. So on mine, I have uh, King James, New King James, Amplified, New Living Translation, and uh, New International Version. And the reason for that is because when you read this, now if you're, if, you can, uh, if you're an English major or something, this might actually make sense to you when you read it. But for the rest of us, this is going to be pretty hard to understand, right? Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Yeah. Now I speak pidgin, that's my native language. So when I read that, I have no idea what in the world that just meant, right? So I'll, I'll pull up my app here, and I'll look at New Living Translation. This is what it says. The Spirit is God's guarantee that He will give us the inheritance He promised, and that He has purchased us to be His own people. He did this so we would, be, we would praise and glorify Him. Hallelujah. Doesn't that make it a lot easier to understand, right? Now, but do, does it mean we chuck out the old King James Version? No. The original King James is the fallback for the best translation of the Bible. Okay? That's why you need the, the, old, the, the original King James Version. It's the most accurate translation of the Bible. Sometimes when I read through the, the New Living Translation, what I find is that some of the translations 
the the um, the translators didn't have a full revelation of grace. So when you see some of the stuff in here, when I'm reading through it, I'm like, ah, that doesn't sound right. And when I look at it in the original, it's not it's not translated correctly. Okay, that's why you need the tr different translations. Okay, checks and balances here. Okay. Okay, now where are we? I'm totally lost there. Number five. Number five? Yeah. Okay, so what does the word earnest um, imply about our inheritance? So I like what earnest. It's kind of like earnest money when, you, when you're um, doing a real estate transaction. It's a down payment or a token. Right. So think about that, right? The earnest, the earnest inheritance, right? That, um, what does the word earnest, down payment or to token, imply about our inheritance? That we haven't received the full inheritance yet. Right. That the earnest is all we need. That we have received the full inheritance of what Jesus paid for. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. We already have it, but we haven't, uh, we didn't receive our, our new bodies and souls yet. Uh, all of the above or none of the above? Okay. What is the correct answer? D. All of the above, right? Wait. We haven't received the point. Okay. A. That's what, that's what the book says. That we haven't received the full inheritance yet. Okay, yeah, that's what it means. Because we haven't... You're just messing me up there. <laughs> Maybe I should have done my homework, huh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. So, we haven't received the full inheritance yet, right? right? When we go to be with Jesus, then everything will be made new. Then we get our glorified bodies, and we renew our minds, and we're not, we're not um, seeing in darkness. We... Exactly. Okay. Number six. When the redemption of the purchased possession occurs, it will be unto whose glory? God's. God's. Hebrews 10.39, James 1.21, James 5.20, and 1 Peter 1.9 all refer to what? Saving soul. Saving soul. 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 soul salvation. That's right. Yep. Soul salvation, right. It's not actual salvation, but it's soul salvation. It's the renewing of our minds, right? Good. According to the ver number eight, according to these verses, is soul salvation automatic? No. No, it's a constant, right? We constantly, from when we get saved to the day we go to be with Jesus, we're constantly renewing our minds. Number nine, read 1 Corinthians 13, 9 to 12. What happened when that which is perfect comes? 1 Corinthians 13, 9 to 12. Who wants to read that? First Corinthians 13, 9 to 12. For we know in part and we prophecy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. Amen. Man, that's going to be a great day, huh? Yeah. We no longer wonder. Imagine that when we fully have full revelation of everything. There is nothing that we don't know. Man, that's going to be awesome, huh? So the question in verse 9, I mean, number 9 was, what happens when that which is perfect comes? Yep, yeah, that which is in part shall be done away with. That's right. Good. Number 10, what did Paul do when he became a man? Put away childish things. Put away childish things, right? That's good. 11, now we see through a glass how? Darkly, right? Later, how, how will we see? Crystal clear. Crystal clear, face to face, right? Man, whew. But think about this, right? As we renew our minds, things start becoming more and more clear, right? As we start getting more revelation, we start getting revelation of the kingdom of God. We, the, the mysteries of the kingdom of God starts being revealed. But it's a, it's a matter of us just renewing our minds to the truth 
And the more we renew our mind, the more it becomes clear. But we'll never get to that point where everything is clear. But man, we can get a lot closer Amen. than where we're at right now, right? Amen. Man. Later, uh, we will know even as what? Even as we are known. Number 14, according to the lesson, where did the complete change occur? In the born again spirit of a person. Amen. Okay. So, here we go. The pivot point, lesson three. I'm going to read through this. And as I'm reading, everybody has their outlines. So, I'll kind of show this for the video for the guys watching on video later. So, here we go. After being born again, the rest of your Christian life consists of simply renewing and releasing. As you renew your mind and believe God's word, your soul will agree with what already transpired in your spirit. When your soul comes into alignment with what it sees in God's spiritual mirror, what's already in your spirit releases into your soul and body. And that's how you experience the benefit of your salvation, right? So when what's in already in our spirit, right? We have the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwelling within us. That's all available to us. I want you guys to stop for a moment. Okay, everybody, put in your catchers right here, okay? We're supposed to be doing everything that Jesus did and more, right? So as we renew our minds and as we get revelation to the truth, those things should become closer and closer and more, and we should see more and more manifestations of that. Amen? And it's a daily process. It's constantly renewing our minds, renewing our minds to the truth. If your spirit and soul agree, you experience the life of God. Your born-again spirit is always for God because it already has been completely changed into his likeness and image. When your soul agrees with your spirit, that's two parts of, you, of your being against one. Since the majority always rules, your soul and body will experience the life, victory, and power that's in your spirit. On the other hand, the supernatural flow of, of life from your spirit to the physical realm stops when your soul agrees with your body, right? When our soul is carnal, meaning a fleshly or just natural, and just going by your natural senses, then it's stopping the flow of what God is, um, your spirit is trying to get through, right? Okay, here we go. You cut yourself off from the experience in God, God's life in you when you align with your soul with what you can ta see, taste, hear, smell, and feel instead of wh what you perceive in the Word. What's in your spirit must flow through your soul in order to get out to your body and your physical world around it. The real you. Take a look at the... Okay, so we're looking at this right here. So we're looking at this circle, right? The inner, the inner circle is your spirit. The, outer, the middle circle is your soul, and the out, outside circle is your body. Just a representation of spirit, soul, and body and how it functions, okay? Take a look at the functional diagram I have included here. I call them functional because there's no inspiration or reality to the fact that I've depicted spirit, soul, and body as circles. None of us are circles, right? Mm -hmm. These diagrams are just an effort to communicate with you the relationship between spirit, soul, and body and by means of illustration. Consider this first diagram of three circles inside each other appears like a target, right? The outer circle is your body. It's the part you can see and feel. Then you have an inner part that can't be seen but can be felt. That's your soul. Notice how your soul touches both your body and your spirit. Your spirit is the second inner part. Although it's the center of who you are, it can't be seen or felt. Most people don't recognize the fact that their spirits are the core of their being. They function primarily out of their soulish parts of them, believing that, believing what they think and feel is reality. They may perceive their souls to be the core of who they are, but God's word says differently, your spirit is the real you. Right? When we die, our spirit is the real us, right? Our bodies stay behind until we get our glorified bodies, right? For as the body without spirit is dead, so faith without work is dead also. James 2, 26. After God formed Adam, he breathed into him the breath of life. Genesis 2, 7. This Hebrew word for breath is also rendered spirit in other places. Uh, for example, Job 26, 4 and Proverbs uh, 20, 27. Adam's body and soul, physically, mental, and emotional parts, had no life in them until spirit was imparted your spirit is your life-giving part 
Okay, you guys got that, right? So when, when God made Adam out of the dot, out of the earth, right? Adam didn't come alive until he breathed his spirit into him, right? That's when, that's, our, that's what gives us life. Our spirit gives us life. Since your life comes from your spirit, it, it, um, it's the innermost circle of the three. Notice also how your spirit is completely surrounded by your soul. It has no direct access to your physical body. The diagram of the three rings also illustrates this lack of a direct link. So we're talking about this three rings right here. Okay, right here. Since your life comes from your spirit, it's, it's the innermost circle of the three. Notice also how your spirit is completely surrounded by your soul. It has no direct access to your physical body. The diagram of the three rings also illustrate this lack of direct links. That's why everything that comes out from your spirit to your body must go through your mental, emotional part, right? Everything that comes out of your spirit has to go through your mental, emotional part. So if we're reading the word and the word says this, but if we're going by our senses and our senses say this, there's going to be a conflict, right? right. So we, we have to choose what we're going to believe. We're going to choose what our, our soul, mind, will, and emotions is telling us, or are we going to believe what the word says? And when we put our faith in a word and we act on that, then we start seeing the manifestation of what's actually in our spirit. So is your soul, is your valve open? Okay, now we're looking at this illustration right here. Kind of like a pipe with a valve on it, a water pipe, right? With the pipe diagram, one side represents your spirit and the other your body. Your soul acts as the valve in between the two. When you open the valve, what's in your spirit can flow through your body depending upon how it how open it is, the flow of life could be just a trickle, a small stream, or a river, right? John 7, 38. When the valve is closed, the flow from spirit to body shuts off. That's a great illustration of how a born-again believer functions, okay? Our soul is the valve, right? Think of a water valve, right? If our soul starts aligning with our spirit, then it starts opening up the valve, right? The more we start renewing our mind to the truth of what the Word says, and the more we understand what the Word says about us, then the, great, the more we open up the valve. Mm -hmm. We start seeing the greater flow. We start seeing greater manifestations, right? Mm -hmm. We start actually seeing what the Word says about us come to pass. In your spirit, you've got the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, Ephesians 1, 18 to 20. However, it's possible to have this power never manifest it. If your soul... Hey, that's big guys right there. We see this every day, right? How many Christians die from sickness and disease all the time, right? Because, and yet the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead. How much worse can that possibly be? Christ was dead. The same spirit that rose him from the dead is dwelling right inside of us. It's right there, right? But yet still people suffer from sickness and disease. Jesus became poor so that we might become rich. And yet, so many Christians suffer from poverty. Why? Because, and the worst part about it is religion. In some religious places, in a lot of religious places, uh, churches, Christian churches, they feel that there's some kind of superiority to being poor. So what are they going to experience? Poverty, right? Because they're, that's what they believe. They believe that there's some kind of superiority to being poor. And because that's the way they think, that's what they experience. But when we realign our mind to what the Word says, man, we start seeing this all flow. I can tell you what, when I started getting revelation of prosperity, I seen things happen that I was like, okay, only God can make things like this happen, right? Only God can do that. Amen. If your soul, like a valve, stays close to the truth, you won't experience it. Without opening the valve by renewing your mind to God's word, the eternal reality in your spirit won't be able to impact the temporal reality of your physical realm. All that resurrection life and power just stays locked up inside until you look into the spiritual mirror long enough to see the real you and release it. Amen? That's the difference between bad works and good works, right? I'm not reading my word, the Bible out of, of duty and obligation, right? I'm not trying to get brownie points, from, brownie points from Jesus, right? But I read my Bible because I'm renewing my mind. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm seeing what the Word says about me and what the Word says about whatever situation I'm dealing with. Amen? 
you could actually die with all the power that raised Jesus from the dead sitting untapped within you. It would be like dying of thirst while leaning against a well full of life-giving water. Think about that. Someone could die of thirst while they're right there next to a well full of water, everything that they need because they simply didn't, or think about this, they're right next to a, a water faucet, right? And they just didn't turn the valve. Crazy, right? Crazy. If you're, if you're dominated by what you feel, your soul is agreeing with the natural realm. I feel sick and my body hurts. The doctor said I'm dying. Here's my medical record to prove it. Even though you have the resurrection life of God in your spirit, your soul can keep it shut off so that not one drop of life-giving power ever touches your physical body. Not one drop ever comes into the physical realm. Man. You can experience depression, anger, and bitterness all the while possessing God's love, joy, and peace in your spirit. Galatians 5.22 says this applies to every... Uh, just The Holy Spirit just checked me on that. So Galatians 5.22, that's the fruits of the Spirit, right? So we oftentimes, when we hear people talk about the fruits of the Spirit, how is it usually talked about? Like it's something that we attain to, right? Oh, I need to work on my love fruit. I need to work on my meekness fruit. Right? Right? See, that's a renewing of your mind. Okay, catch this, what I'm saying right there, guys. It, we, don't, we don't have to work on it. It's already inside of us. Okay? The, spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is already inside of us. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, all that good stuff is already inside of us. Okay? Catch what I'm saying right there. Just so... It's an important thing right here. If, if that is already inside of us, and yet we're, uh, we're exuding um, being unloving, being uh, everything else, that opposite of what the Word said is already inside of us, then what's the problem? Mm -hmm. Same thing, right? It's already inside of us, but it's renewing our mind to the truth. Right. Rather than bad works where I'm trying to change myself, mm -hmm. right? I'm trying to walk out love better. I'm trying to be more meek. I'm trying to be more loving towards people. Instead of that, I renew my mind to who I am in Christ. Mm -hmm. The Word says this about me, right? I have love, joy, peace, yes. long-suffering, all this good stuff inside of me, right? And then I live through that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not trying to make it happen. Now it's happening as a byproduct of truth. Yes. Make sense? Yes. So I'm no longer working to make this happen. I'm striving, right? Mm -hmm. Bad works. Now I'm just resting in God. I'm, I'm trusting what the Word says about me. Yeah. All right inside of me, right? Um, you guys see the contrast? Yeah. Big difference. Right. Little thing, but big difference, right? That's the way, that's the way we got to see it. It's already done. It's a finished work of the cross. Mm -hmm. And when we get that, that it's the finished work of the cross, then we, get, start, we can at least get to first base here, guys. From there, we can start building momentum. Okay? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Your body doesn't really control anything. It just goes with the flow of what it sees, tastes, hears, smells, and feels, unless otherwise influenced by the soul. It's amoral, neither good nor bad. Left to itself, your body just reacts to, to and goes along with what happens and what's happening in your physical realm. When your soul agrees with your spirit, the life of God in you will manifest itself in your physical body. You ex you'll experience healing, deliverance, anointing, victory, power, joy, prosperity, Everything else that the Word says about us, right? Mm -hmm. On and on it goes. Everything that the Word says about of us, says about us, right? Once we start renewing our mind to the truth, okay? We got to, oh man, there's so much stuff. I tell you what, growing up in church is great, right? It st started us on the right path. But there's a lot of things that we got to unlearn. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we got to unlearn. It's the traditions of man that makes the Word of God of no effect, right? Mm -hmm. The traditions of man that make the word of God of no effect. The little things like that, right? We trying to get the fruit of the spirit. <laughs> I mean, the fruits of the spirit, right? I need to work to get this. God, I got to work on my love walk. Help me to love people better when it's already inside of me, right? Whether than just agreeing with it. Man, I have this inside of me. I, I mean, if I act unloving to somebody, this is practical. Let me give you practical, okay? If I act unloving towards somebody, right? Rather than going home and praying, Jesus, help me with my love walk towards people. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I already have this fruit of love inside of me. Yeah. 
God, I pray that you help me to manifest this in my life. How much easier is that? Right? right? Yes. I need patience, Lord. God, help me in the patience walk. <laughs> oh, you better not say you want patience because you're going to get tested with that for sure. Right? How many of you ever heard that in church? Right? Really? Does that re is that really the word or is that man's traditions? Right? Yeah. Right? Anything you focus on is going to manifest. Like the, the brand new car that you buy that no, you didn't see anybody driving that color of car, right? <laughs> and as soon as you buy it, you see everybody has the same color car, right? Why is it? Because that's what you're focusing on. As the same thing with patience. If you're focusing on patience, of course you're going to get tested in patience. Right? This is not a God thing working. It has nothing to do with that. Right? But we, the tradition of man, we make things like this. We, we make this. It's almost like a cult, guys. We make it into, we make Christianity into this religion of what we think and what we want to believe rather than what the Word says. What does the Word say? What does the Word say? Right? If we can renew our minds to that, and once, guys, once you start renewing your mind, I tell you, you're going to see things like this. You're going to hear somebody say something. Man, wait, 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 wait. Something doesn't fit. In my spirit, man, something's not fitting there. This doesn't line up with truth. There's works to this, and this is not good works. There's works to this, so this is something that's going to hinder me rather than set me free. This is going to stop it rather than release it. Right? Amen? Amen. Okay. So let's go through the outline here. Everybody got your outlines? Okay. So we're on, let me see, make sure I'm corresponding here. So number one in our outlines, after being born again, the rest of the Christian life consists of simply renewing and releasing. As we renew our minds and believe God's word, our soul will agree with what's already transpired in our spirits. When our spirits and soul agree, we release and experience the life of God. When our bodies and soul agree, we cut off the supernatural flow of, of life from our spirits. When our body and soul, when our flesh and our soul, mind, will, and emotions agree, we cut off the supernatural flow of life from our spirits. What's in our born-again spirit must flow through our souls in order to, to get out to our bodies and the physical world around them. So here it goes... Um, once, we, once we're born again, what does the Christian life consist of? Once we're born again, what does the Christian life consist of? Renewing and releasing, right? It's all about renewing and releasing from there. Once you get born again, that's the main thing. But if you don't start renewing and releasing from that point, then you're sitting right next to the faucet and you can die of thirst. Right? Okay. Number two. Oh, wait. But what, number one again, sorry, B, what, what must be renewed? What must be renewed? Mind. Our minds, right? What must be, what must we renew it to? What must we renew our minds to? God's word. word That's right. What must happen in order for us to release and experience the life of God within? What must happen in order for us to release and experience the life of God within? Spirit and soul agree. That's right. That's right there. Spirit and soul needs to agree. That's the key of this whole lesson right there. Once our spirit and soul agrees, man, everything lines up. We start seeing all kinds of good things happen in our lives, right? What happens when our bodies and souls agree? When our body and soul agree, what happens? Come on, you guys are thinking too hard, right? You cut off the flow. You cut off the flow. That's right. What part of our beings must the life of God flow through in order to get to our bodies and the physical world around us? What part of our being must the life of God flow through? What is everything going through? What is the valve? What is the valve there, guys? Soul. The soul. <laughs> That's right. You guys thinking too hard here. Listen, I'm looking for the answers. You guys know the answer already. I said it about 15 times in the last 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Just think, just you guys thinking too hard. Seriously. <laughs> okay. Notice the diag diagram of the three circles inside each other. It appears like a target, right? Okay. 
The outer circle represents our bodies. It's the part we can see and feel. The inner circle represents our soul. It can't be seen, but it can be, but it can be felt. Also, it touches both our body and our spirit. The innermost circle represents our spirits. Although it's a center of who we are, it can't be seen or felt. It's completely surrounded by our souls. So number two, diagram of the three circles appears like a target. According to the diagram, which part uh, can be seen? What part of you can be seen? The body, right? Okay. Which parts uh, can be felt? Body and soul. Body and soul. Body and soul can feel, right? Which parts does the soul touch? What parts does the soul touch? body and a spirit right it's in between which part is completely surrounded by the soul what's that which part is completely surrounded by the spirit and by the soul the spirit right yeah which part is completely surrounded by the soul that's actually written wrong sorry that's written wrong the soul completely surrounds the spirit i gotta correct this right here somebody wrote that wrong can our spirits be seen or felt? No. No, right? Can't feel it. No. The only way you know what's going on in your spirit is by the word, right? right? And then you see the manifestation of it. Kind of like the wind, right? You can't see it, right. but you see the manifestation of the wind, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Three, your spirit is the core of your being, the real you, your life-giving part, James 2.26 and Genesis 2.7. The spirit is the core of your being, the, the real you. Can someone read that? James 2, 2 26, and uh, someone else get. Okay. So then the body is no more spirit inside, say, Marcus. <laughs> I have to do that, I have a vision. Okay, I'm sorry to do that, okay? Okay, Marcus, for as the body is the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Okay, amen. Okay, and the next one? Genesis 2 7. The spirit is what actually gave life to the dust, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so number three A, which part is the core of our beings? What is the core of our beings? What is the core of our What gives life? Spirit, right? Okay. Spirit. What does James 2.26 tell us about a relationship between the body and the spirit? You just read it. What was it? With a body without the spirit is dead. A body without the spirit is dead, right? Yeah. Serious guys, you guys just yeah. put away the notes. You guys, you guys looking for answers when you guys know this already. Put away the notes. Just, just listen to what I'm asking. You guys know this. I guarantee you guys know it. Okay. Okay. Um, Genesis two seven. Somebody wants to read that? I just read that. We just read that one? Okay. Yeah, wait. someone read it. So why is it asking me to read it again? That's okay. So read it again. That's okay. The Hebrew, the Hebrew word translates breath is also rendered spirit in other verses. Job 26.4 and Proverbs 20. What's that? The word is Barak. Barak, is that the actual uh, Greek or Hebrew? Barak. Hebrew. Hebrew. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. What does Genesis 2 7 tell us about our spirits? What does Genesis 2 7 tell us about our spirits? What did I just share? What, what, was, what was that? Outside of when God made Adam out of the dirt, all it was was the dirt until he breathed life into it, right? Okay, so it's spirit gave it life. Okay, number four. Notice the diagram of the three rings. Okay, we're looking at the three rings. Our spirits have no direct access to our physical bodies. Everything that comes out from our spirits to our bodies must go through our mental, emotional part. So number four. Diagram of the three rings. According to the diagram, do our spirits have any direct access to our phys physical bodies? No. 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 
In order to come out from our spirits to our bodies, what part must everything go through? The soul. The soul, that's right. Okay, good. You guys just, you guys thinking too hard, right? You guys know it. I knew you guys knew this. Okay, the pipe diagram. Okay, let's go number five here. Notice the pipe diagram. Our soul acts as a valve in between our spirit and our bodies. The flow of, our, the flow of God's supernatural life from our spirits to our bodies, natural realm, depends on how open our souls are. Without opening the valve by renewing our minds to God's word, the eternal reality in our spirits won't be able to impact the temporal, the temporal reality of our physical realms. All that resurrection life and power just stays locked up inside until we look into the spiritual mirror long enough to see the real us and release it. We could experience depression, anger, and sickness all the while possessing God's love, peace, joy, and healing in our spirits. Galatians 5.22. We talked about that one, right? Okay. Number five. What do our souls act like between our spirit and our bodies? What the, it's a valve, right? The more we renew our mind, the, bit, the wider the valve opens, the more we'll see the flow of God, all the promises of God flowing into our lives. How do we open uh, this valve so that the eternal reality in our spirits will be able to impact the temporal, the temporal reality of our physical realm? How do we open a valve? Renewing our minds, right? Renewing our minds, okay. Is it possible for us to have the resurrection life and power of God on the inside of us and never experience it? Yes, yes. yes right? <laughs> Sitting next to the faucet, right? Dehydrated. I picture that guy in a desert, right? Right there next to a faucet, dying of thirst. Not good. Can you see how pivotal, how pivotal your soul is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got all the questions there? Awesome. How much time? 40 minutes? We did good time today. Okay. So, um, Michael had a good suggestion last. Um, he emailed me. He said, you know what? What we could do, um, if you guys think of other questions and stuff along the way, um, if you guys online, you guys want to email me, that would be great. If you guys want to ask me any questions right now, we can do that also. I'll start with you guys online. And then, um, I think we're good. Questions from you guys first? Mariana, you have any questions for me before you cut out here? <laughs> no, I'm okay. Thank you. You okay? Okay, good. Uh, Mariana had a question about your background. My background? <laughs> I mean, the, uh, what's in behind you, the, the map. Oh, my map? map? <laughs> yeah? What about, that? what about it? That's what she, she asked me, so I said yeah. I asked you. Yeah, I just, I wanted to know if it has, like, a special meaning. Does it... Is it like a current map? Is it an old map? Does it have the, um, I don't know, like, or is it just any random map? It's a, for me, I got it because Hawaii is in the middle. Uh -huh. So when you look at it from a world view, I don't know, for me, uh -huh. I, I like having maps because I like seeing what is, that's what God is calling us to, right? Yes. You're not That's just right. calling us just yeah. to the city. The There's yeah. Oh yeah, this is one thing that God's throwed me. You guys ever rode in a plane and in the plane, you know those, um, I think it's Hanahol magazines they have, and it has the flight, the flight um, patterns. Man, and you know what, uh, God showed me this. When you, when you look at that, next time you see that, or try pulling up flight, flight paths, okay? Picture that, Hawaii is the hub of the Pacific, mm -hmm. right? Once we start sharing the gospel and people start getting true revelation of the true gospel, man, I believe it's going to go like that yeah. throughout the Pacific. We're, we're here for, there's a reason why so many people, Kara students that tried moving back here and starting ministries, um, wasn't able to do that. There's a reason why. There's a hindrance here. There's a big hindrance here um, from the true gospel being preached. And I can tell you this, it's funny because, man, I question, I question the working and, um, for sales for Hilton Grand Vacations, timeshare sales of all things, right? I mean, going into ministry and doing timeshare sales, there's such a stigma towards it, right? And you hear the commercials and all these things. Now, 
a lot of them are bad companies. They they do they 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 sell things that they overpromise, they underdeliver, and stuff like that. I don't know if some of you had bad experiences with timeshares, but I really felt like God showed me that this is what I needed to do. And I can tell you this: in the five months that I worked there prior to all of this happening, God showed me how to make the gospel, how to make it, how to be able to break through so that people can receive it. Mm -hmm. Because if I had presented the gospel in the way I knew how to present the gospel and how I was taught how to present the gospel, man, I wouldn't even have been heard. Mm -hmm. I am serious. What I learned, it's funny, right? God will take natural means, right? God will take natural means, <coughs> download something inside of me. Because in two hours, you're making big sales. I shared a little bit about that. Did you guys all hear that message when I shared that? In two hours, you're taking someone from is totally, they have the entire plan. They are not buying anything from you. If there's a husband and a wife, they come in, they are totally rigid. They ain't buying nothing. And a lot of times, they're giving you an attitude, okay? They're coming in hard, and they're coming in strong. And in two hours, you're convincing them that this is a good product, that they can benefit from it, and you're making a sale. Had I not learned how to do that there, right, when the opposition comes, because this is such a hard it's so hardwired inside of us. Like I shared, the traditions of man, the words that we hear um, in the traditional denominational churches, a lot of times it's so hardwired that when I even preach the true gospel of grace, guards come up so fast that people can't receive it. But because I did what I did, I don't back down. I get right into it, right? I get people real quick. Yeah. That's why people can receive. Isn't that crazy? I go to Caris for four years and I come back and in five months I learn how to deliver the message in a way that can be received here. But that's what God does, right? God shows us. He leads us in his path. That's why being obedient to God is not a work. Being obedient to God is God is directing and he's guiding and showing you what to do and how to do it, right? Had I been just in my flesh because my, my soul was telling me, you're crazy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Go sell residential real estate. That's why you went to your classes. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Everything inside of me told me go sell timeshares of all things. But what did it produce, right? Mm -hmm. What is it producing? What, how did it prepare me to do this? I don't know how I got on this subject. How in the world are we just talking about maps, right? <laughs> We're talking about maps. But that's what I believe. I believe, guys, seriously, God, during this transition time right now, God has wanted me to build up disciples. This is all that I'm doing right now. I'm focusing on building up disciples, people that's going to change the world. This is not about a Hilo Hawaii, Puna Hawaii uh, ministry. This is about people going out, reaching the world for Jesus, touching the corners of the earth. Because I tell you what, once people get the true gospel of grace and they truly get free and they start truly experiencing what it means to really... What, the, what, does, what is Christianity supposed to be, right? What is Christianity actually supposed to be? Not what we were taught, not what we just grew up seeing and learning and all these things, but what we actually know. I mean, what, what, what is actually real. Once people get a hold of this, it's going to set people free and it's going to set a blaze like wildfire. I guarantee you this. I guarantee you this. God is training up people right now God is training up people and some people it might be fivefold ministry pastors teachers evangelists prophets uh, apostles it might be fivefold oh, the majority though is going to be in the marketplace it's every day where you live you affecting your own life your own world your own in, um, influencing your areas right and through those influence man we will impact the world I promise you that I promise you that Amen? Amen. 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 I'm excited. Can you tell? <laughs> awesome. You know, you, you're talking about the, the marketplace. Um, at school, we had a meeting probably a couple weeks ago, and it was on, you know, uh, Zoom. And as people were talking, they were sharing, and I just, I can tell that people are hungry for what you're talking about, but they don't know how to access it. Yeah. They, 
you know, they're, they're, it's not, they don't want religion, but they, they're hungry for something that, like what you're talking about, but they don't know how to access it. Yeah. And so I, I saw that. I said, uh-huh. wow, this is, this is amazing. They're trying all different things yeah. on their own. Yeah. Um, but I, as I said, man, they, they're hungry for it. Yeah. So I, yeah. I'm totally, I agree with what you're saying. Amen. Yeah. I tell you what, you guys have it all inside of you. I, you guys may not even see um, the manifestation yet in your own lives here, but I tell you what, I can see the difference in the way you talk. I, I can listen to someone for a couple minutes and I can tell you if you're getting revelation or not. I can tell when people are so, um, uh, so um, their mindsets and how they believe and how they're talking, if, they're, if they understand truth or not. I don't have to be with you for hours. And I tell you what, I see the difference already. And I've seen the manifestation of it already in your lives and how you're talking, how you're believing. Even your own demeanors is changing right now. God is doing something in you guys' lives because the Word breaks the yoke. The Word is the hammer that breaks the yoke. I tell you what, and as we get rid of all the traditions of man, right? That little thing right there, right? The fruit of the Spirit. Man, I'm striving to try to get this thing to manifest in my life. Totally going about it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Right? Simple thing like that. I don't have to make this happen in my life. It's already inside of me. Mm-hmm. Jesus already did the deed so that we can have it. Right? He already paid the high price. Mm-hmm. He already did everything. My job is just to line myself with what the Word says and receive what Jesus already paid the price for. The more we can renew our minds to that truth, guys, the, we're taking the limits off of God. Call it, call it drafting God. What is that? I call it drafting God. Drafting God? What do you mean? Expound on that. In racing or uh, any kind of sport, you draft behind someone because it's the least amount of resistance. Ah, yeah. That's good. Coat yeah, yeah. That's the same thing like when geese fly, right? They fly in the V's. Same thing, they're drafting, right? Yeah. Right? The first one is taking all the, the resistance, right? Uh-huh. Jesus already did that. That's yeah. good, man. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to use that. Good one. <laughs> I good stuff from you, buddy. <laughs> what were you going to say? No, when you were talking earlier, I was on my question and I kind of got it answered, but I just want to make sure I got it. You're talking about so my question is how do you release it how do you, do you release so how do you release how do you actually turn the valve and release it is it just is it my answer is it from renewing your mind mm-hmm. yeah. yeah is there anything else no. releasing the valve see that goes counter everything we were ever taught right mm-hmm. it's always doing 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 Right? Yeah. I need well, to do this. Yeah. To do this. Because that's the that's a natural response, right? Our mind is gonna tell us. Because man in ourselves, we want to be God of our own lives. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Man wants to be God in our lives, right? If I do something wrong, I gotta inflict pain on myself. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> that's man trying to be God in their own lives, right? We see that all the time, right? In ourselves. To to think that you know what, I just need to sit back and just renew my mind to the truth. And as I align myself with that truth, I'm going to see the manifestation of it. It counter everything that's inside of us to do. Because you're taught you got to earn things. When yeah. you're little, you earn, you earn, you earn. Yeah. It's very hard to just... To just let God... To just, yeah. yeah. It's totally different. Do you guys understand how, how that works in a practical sense? Mm-hmm. How long are we going? You guys want, want me to share something with you guys in a practical sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we talk about trying to overcome whatever we're trying to overcome, right? Um, let's talk about just, let's say we need deliverance from something, okay? And this is why I think I talked about this before, but as like, let's say we're trying to get deliverance from something and we're striving to get it. It's like, the, let's, let's, let's say with a kid, right? You tell them, don't do this. Let me give you this example right here. My grandmother, I went to her house. My grandmother went to her house and she said, hey, all you kids over here, you guys don't go up and look in a cabinet, in a top cabinet in the bathroom. You guys don't look in that cabinet, okay? <laughs> Guess what the first thing I did? 
after she left. I had to use the bathroom all of a sudden, right? And what did I do? I went straight into the bathroom. I climbed up on the sink and I looked in the cabinet. What? What was it? We're not supposed to be looking. Why? Right? That's inside of us, right? Right? Whenever we're striving, when some, when that's just inside of us. But if we, and if we're focusing on sin like that, or we're trying to overcome, it produces that inside of us, right? But if we focus on righteousness and who I am in Christ, right? If my focus is there then everything else follows behind that. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. The more we focus on what we're not supposed to do, then the more, the more we will do that thing that we're not focusing on trying not right. to do, right? right? But if we just focus on who I am in Christ, I look in the mirror and this is what Jesus says about me, even if I mess up, right? I'm not condemning myself. What do I do? I hit the delete button by, how do I hit the delete, delete button? <laughs> right? Yes. How do I hit the delete button? Uh, Jesus. Forgiveness, forgiveness right? I'm not groveling at the altar. I'm not begging and pleading. God, forgive me. I messed up again. Thank you, Jesus. I'm righteous. How's that? Yeah. Oh, that just messes with your mind, right? Yeah, you're not going to tell us what's in the cabinet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the Portuguese right there, right? She had to know. I couldn't leave what was in the cabinet. Yeah, yeah. My uncle just bought a gun and he put it in a cabinet. I'm like, I'm like, hello. I'm like, yeah. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Because that's our nature, right? Our nature is going to do that. But it doesn't produce what, what we're trying, what God is producing inside of us, right? When we focus on the truth, we focus on what the word says about us, mm -hmm. then that comes automatically. We start producing. When, I, when I'm focusing on being sick, it's going to produce sickness inside of me. Right. When, I produce, when I focus on being healed, mm -hmm. what the word says about it, it produces healing inside of me. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I'll share something with you guys. Oh, man. You know what? Never mind. I'll share next time. <laughs> We're going too long here. Anyways, if you guys have any more questions, you think of something, go ahead and email me. I'd love to hear from you guys. And um, Anything else, though, before we go? We're good. Mariana, you got, came up with anything as I was just rattling on here? <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. Love you guys. I'll see you guys next week, okay? Aloha. Aloha. Okay, bye. Aloha. Bye. Aloha. bye. Okay. If you guys have any questions or comments or just like to reach out, I'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and email me at kawakamibh at gmail.com. Kawakami, K-A-W-A-K-A-M-I-B-H at gmail.com. Love you guys. See you later.